In a previous video, I read the official guide for Half-Life 2 to find weird and interesting things hidden within its hundreds of pages of text. So today I set out to read the guide for the original Half-Life. However, I did make one mistake. I accidentally read the official guide for the Dreamcast version of Half-Life, which actually never came out. Strangely, it was cancelled so late in development that the guide had already basically been released. So that's why there are still copies of it floating around on the internet. And while I was searching for the Half-Life uh, official guide, I accidentally stumbled upon this one instead. I should have been paying more attention because it does say Dreamcast on the cover. So after I realized this, I did go back to see how similar it is to the original uh, Half-Life guide for PC, and I did find that they are pretty similar. There are some sections that are exactly the same word for word. These are written and published by the same person and company. The author is however different from the Half-Life 2 guide. Uh, this time it is written by Joe Grant Bell, but it is still published by a Prima or Prima, don't know how to say it. This time the guides are Seemingly printed in black and white, the covers are in color, but all the pages inside are in black and white. I don't have a physical uh, copy of the guide, so it's possible that whoever scanned it in, scanned it in in black and white. But since the uh, covers are in color, I'm going to assume that the guides are officially in black and white. Which is kind of a shame, because they would probably be a lot more readable and uh, enjoyable if they were in color. A lot of the screenshots from the games are, you know, a little bit muddled, I guess, just because of the uh, nature of black and white printing. So anyway, some other differences between the PC version of the guide and the Dreamcast version of the guide is that the Dreamcast one is just so much more intense in its presentation. The fonts are weirder, each page is more grungy, and there's all these cutouts of characters and enemies filling every single, like, blank available space. I do like the more detailed, at least I feel like it's more detailed way that they did the walkthrough in the Dreamcast version, which I think it's actually much more similar to how it's presented in the Half-Life 2 Prima Guide. So I think that's just showing how the publisher evolved over time, but it's entirely subjective and maybe you prefer the original version. So without further ado, let's take a look at some strange, interesting, and funny things from the original Half-Life guide. So on page 4 we learn that leeches are also called hagworms in the Half-Life 1 guide. Uh, just an interesting alternate name for these creatures. On page 5, uh, just like in the Half-Life 2 guide, they don't mention that the pistol can fire underwater. I don't know why this is something that doesn't show up in the guide. They make a very big point of saying how the crossbow can fire underwater, but never the pistol. On page 9, the guide reminds you not to snark yourself. On page 11, the game describes an item in the game as confusing. On page 13, the headcrab zombie is referred to as a maw man. Now, that's an interesting term that I hadn't really heard before. Maybe it was the official term when the first Half-Life came out, but by the time that Half-Life 2 came out, and definitely by the time I started playing Half-Life 2 and Half-Life, everybody referred to these as headcrab zombies. On page 16, we learn that you can kill Gargantua with just your regular weapons, although it is not recommended. On page 17, we learn that assassins are deadly. On page 22, the guide gives us some FPS strategy, which is interesting, especially since the original Half-Life when it came out, FPS was a much younger genre, so I think it's kind of helpful that the game gives a lot of useful tips here. On page 29, Gordon looks very lost. On page 30, step 1, your train makes no stops. Step 2, at one point, your train stops. On page 51, tip, don't move around much while the cart is in motion, or you will fall off. Page 57, tip, if you stay in the elevator, it will plummet into a pool of toxic sludge. 
feels like it's recommending that you do that and not like it's not a warning. It's a tip, you know, page 67. We recommend ignoring the rail cart this time. Towards the end of the guide, there is also a section on Half-Life Blue Shift. But it's interesting that I guess the Dreamcast version was going to have both the original game and Blue Shift. So, well, I guess it's a shame that it never came out. After that, I wanted to share some cheats that you had on the Dreamcast version of Half-Life 2 for anyone who is... I guess looking to use some cheats in this one, like this one's called Zen Teaches Black Mesa, and it adds Zen Gravity on Earth. Soldiers Ignore Gordon, and that's no target mode. Otis Loves Dreamcast, that's God Mode. I don't know who Otis is. Maybe that's uh, the dog from Garfield, I guess. Dreamcast Gives Firepower, that one's Infinite Ammo. Next we have Action Ignore Silence, and that's Slow Motion Mode. Anyways, that was the Half-Life Guide for Dreamcast. It's pretty similar to the regular Half-Life Guide, which I accidentally didn't read. Thanks for watching.